I'ma get it, you know I be on the way. You probably saw by now I took my car to Coda to do some racing. While I was there, I had some problems with overheating on the car. So one thing that I did know before going out there is that these Ford Performance or Roush Superchargers uh, have a problem with heat soak. There's a little bit of that in all of them, but this one in particular really reacts to it. So this one here is a phase two before you ask. It does have the upgraded cooling system for it. I also upgraded the radiator to a larger Mishimoto radiator and upgraded the oil cooler to a Mishimoto oil cooler. So all of that is set up in place. The way that Roush handles this kind of stuff is if you've seen any of their cars down here in the corner, they have a larger vent opening. Then over here in the fender, they do a fender vent. I don't wanna do that. My car's a RTR, not a Roush. If I put that stuff on there, it's definitely Roush. So I wanna make sure to alleviate that. When I was on track, I was seeing temps as high as like 260, 265, and it was putting my car into a limp mode. So first time out there on the track, I was doing probably about 120 to 130 up the front straight. In the back straight, I was getting up to some decent speeds, but by the end of my sessions, I couldn't get above 53 on that front straight. So it definitely killed this car. Some people say the route to go is the killer chiller and I don't wanna go there just yet. I wanna try and do everything that I can to solve this without putting that in my trunk. Not that I'm opposed to it, I just don't really want to. The other thing that I think is really good to point out is as you can see from all the dead grass here, I live in Texas. So when I was at the track, in Austin at the time, the temps were probably about 105, 107. So track temps, as you can imagine, were pretty high. And I'm not gonna be able to do anything about that until it cools off, but I do wanna be able to make sure that this car drives a little bit better, not just on track, but on the road, because it does start to overheat and you start losing power there too. First thing that I did was I removed the hood liner. So that has come off. So hopefully it won't retain as much heat into that. The other thing too is since this is an RTR, it has the RTR hood vents. And because of this, aggressive slope in the front. Heat does dissipate a little bit quicker than what it would on factory. But if you look underneath here, I've already removed this one, but you have this plate on the back. It kind of blocks that vent. So heat then has to radiate from back behind here to come up and out. So what I'm doing is removing this, which opens it up and as you can see is a clear shot out. Not a huge opening, we could probably open it more if we want to. I want to hold off on that for now. I'm not really worried about rain or anything getting in through there at all because I do have the air box on the car. So with this shield, I don't have to worry about any air getting up into the intake, so that shouldn't be a problem. And today is a nice rainless day. So we're removing those. I'm gonna go for a cruise today with one of the local group's speed advocates, and we'll see how she does. If you want to give this a try, just know when you go to pull this off, it's going to be stuck on there pretty hard. It's going to feel like you might break the piece. Just pull on it, if it's slight pressure, and then it'll pop off. The reason it does that is because it's got double-sided 3M tape there holding it up against it. Now, the other thing too that you might notice is that it looks like, oh crap, I can't bolt those in. But you can bolt it all the way in because you're going to get to the metal on the other side of the hood. So the bolt will go up through this hole, but it stays in place. So just got done with the cruise. If you look, it says air inlet temps 126. It's rising because I'm sitting here stationary, but uh, temp outside is 109. I think the highest I saw it get was 115. And so air inlet temps usually stay around that. Uh, for the cylinder head temps, the highest I saw was 223, which is not what I wanted, but the benefit of that is it's lower than what it has been. So recently, uh, I'd been seeing it get up to the 230s, 240s, and on track, it was getting all the way up to like 260, and everything's like shutting down at that point. And then once I got moving, everything here kind of started to level out. I would see maybe dip down to the 219s, 218, so nothing horrible. A lot better since I opened up the vent a little bit more and got rid of the underhood lining. So an update since I last filmed that clip, I still see power loss. So even when you're up around 219, you do see a slight power loss, but I have been seeing it climb up again into the 220s, 229 range around there. Haven't had anything go into limp mode, 
but I am losing a significant amount of power. The worst that I've seen is, I mean, I've had Focus STs be able to hang with me. It's, I don't wanna say embarrassing because those are good cars, but it just sucks when you know that your car is supposed to have 750 at the crank, and then you have a car that's got sub 300s hanging with you, especially on a takeoff. So that means we gotta start looking into some other ways to help cool this thing down without going the route of the max cool where I have to put in the fender vents. So we're gonna try a few things before doing the one thing that I'm sure everybody here is gonna suggest that I do, which is switching over to a Whipple. So let's see how the next few things that I got planned are gonna work out. Make sure to go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't already. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit those bell notifications so you don't miss anything that I got coming up. Hopefully Nate's wide body will be here soon for his Focus ST and we can get that knocked out. But until then, we're gonna start focusing on this cooling issue with the RTR Spec 5. And if you guys want me to do a full walk around of this vehicle, which I haven't, make sure to leave that down in the comments below. Until next time, peace.